18 important points that officers must consider in coastal and congested waters. Coastal passages are an extremely busy time for the ship's officer of the watch. The traffic density is usually high with an increased concentration of fishing vessels that aren't exactly sweep in response at all times. There are multitude of tasks at hand and the OOW has to manage it all. This sort of high pressure demands extreme time and skill management. Some of the important tasks for deck officers involve constant plotting on the vessel on the large scale chart, maneuvering, and alteration as per the passage plan, and keeping a sharp lookout at the same time. Managing the jobs on the bridge require efficient and accurate allocation of time and available resources. When the OOW is busy himself, he must ensure that the other lookout at disposal is sharp and absolutely vigilant. Not to forget that being the one in charge, he must also judge a situation where it is imperative for him to take over the primary duty of keeping a lookout. Ironical as it may seem, these two demands equal allocation of time for collision avoidance as well as position fixing. It is at times like this that the OOW must not hesitate in informing the master for seeking assistance and it doesn't necessarily imply inefficiency in the part of the OOW. All the tasks that are, that are in simultaneous progress are equally important and crucial to safe navigation. That is why the navigator must keep in mind the following point in such congested waters. Number one, Stick to the master's orders for he knows best out of experience and knowledge as to which modus operandi best suits those waters. Number two, use the best available large-scale chart for the area for higher accuracy. Number three, account for set and drift. Number four, identify all navigation on marks prior to approaching them and continue to figure them out as you progress along the voyage. Study the chart to pick up any landmarks as early as possible. Number five, account for strong tidal currents that automatically cause deviation in the ship's intended operation. Six, comply with the rules of the traffic separation scheme to avoid any unnecessary complications. Seven, identify the landmarks using the chart and visually. Use all available aids to fix a very accurate position using that information. In congested waters, it boils down to the very finest point of accuracy. 8. Adjust the courses to allow for deviations. 9. Avoid treading too close to navigational hazards, oil fields, etc. Needless to say, it increases the chances of mishap, especially when there is a viable prospect of shallow waters. 10. An increased traffic density, especially the presence of fishing vessels closer to the coast, demands higher vigilance and sharper lookout. Use the manpower at hand to the fullest. 11. Report to the VTS as and when required. The VTS is generally quite responsive, which makes it easier to coordinate bridge operations pertaining to coastal navigation. 12. The need for hand steering is almost always necessary when in such waters. It is therefore important to have the right person to be on standby for steering duty. 13. Keep a very, very close watch on the UKC to avoid grounding. Seafarers have experienced the hassle of a grounded vessel known it's best to avoid such an incident. 14. Communicate with the ECR to ensure that the engines are ready for maneuvering as and when required. A clear communication process with the ECR brings in the expertise of another angle, thereby increasing the efficiency of the ship overall. 15. Log all the relevant information as you go along, most importantly the radio log. Evidence of communication is always important from a legal point of view. 16. Increase the PPI if the serum gets more confined. Remember to inform master about any decision with respect to navigation in advance. 
17. Adjust the course in case the vessel seems to be going off track. When provided with limited room, it is obvious that the track ought to be maintained to avoid an impending disaster. 18. Most importantly, call the master before any crucial situation arises. Assess and appraise a situation to determine as to when it becomes inevitable for the master's expertise and knowledge to be brought in. It is agreed upon and obvious that navigation in waters with limited sea room and limitless hazards to vessel movement requires a special, specialized skill set. And although a seafarer is qualify, qualified to handle such situations, it basically comes down to handling time and allocating importance in the best possible way. Therefore, all the above mentioned important points must be taken into deep regard in performing the OOWs to his finest in coastal and congested waters.